So, what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to create the input max for your field such as phone number, zip code. So let's take a look at that one first. So we need to open up the access database. So last class we were looking at car repair shop, right? <coughs> So let's take a look at customer table. <coughs> so we have first name, last name. Now in this case, we don't need any input max. Let's check on contact. Yeah, this one we can use input max. That is the input max. Right, so let office phone to that input max. So take a look at how do we do this. So to create this, you just switch to the design view and click on the home phone or the field that you want to adjust or apply the input mask. And under the property sheets, you see input mask. <coughs> you can just click on the dot 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 box button here. And then you can pick phone number. In the case of we dealing with phone, we can do with social security, zip code, extensions, password, time, date. And this is a part where you can try it. It's going to look like that. And you can also click next to get to the placeholder you can put any characters that you like to have on the list as a placeholder so now I'm going to use the number signs here when you try it it's going to look like that and when you want to store the data do you want to store in this format without the symbols like parentheses or this format. I'm going li to leave it as default without the symbols. And then we're done. So that's how you create an input mask. Okay, so now when we start to enter the phone number, we see that we have input mask showing up. You can do the same with office phone. <coughs> okay. Now, we can take a look at your zip code. You can do the same by applying the input max, right? Like that is the placeholder as the underscores here. Okay. Now, input max is going to help the user to know that what are the appropriate format or data that you're supposed to enter <coughs> and make it as standardized to your table. Alright, so now let's take a look at how about the validation rules. <coughs> like we sometimes we apply to emails. For example, we want to know if the user entered the valid emails or not. Now, this is a formula that we need to put it on the rules. So I'm going to copy this. <coughs> Let's say if we have a contact, we can add another field's name, email. And we add customer emails. Now, without the validation rules, you can just type any and still allow you to enter. But with the validation rules, it's going to check that 
email format what email format is supposed to look like it's supposed to look like any type of characters so I'm going to use a placeholder placeholder with a number signs any type of characters followed by the add symbols right and followed by any type of characters and followed by dot right that's supposed to be the format of the emails right and then followed by any type of characters right so that's the email format so we need to apply that how do we do that switch to de design view and select the field that you want to apply <coughs> under the property sheets here we see the validation rule we're going to click on that button and paste the formula that I copy from the sheet okay so what does this formula do is say let's let's test I'm going to show you what does it do like for example when I enter that is an invalid email address so it's going to pop up the message say one or more values are prohibited by the validation rule <coughs> the rule said it can be null is null is okay let's say if I say null mean you can leave it empty we're not required that all the customers has to have emails so this is good <coughs> it's null is okay now what happened then why I can't enter JJJ because it say or if it's empty it's okay or if it's not empty it has to look like any number of characters so they use this asterisk and question mark to represent that to come before the ad and any number of characters come after the ad right just like in this format like I told you it can be any number of characters that come before the ad and after the ad symbol and then following by the period <coughs> and then can be any number of characters again so let's try that <coughs> So it works now. So that's how you apply the validation rules. Let's try again. If I don't have the right format, it's going to pop up. Say it's not valid. According to a rule, we just say it can be empty. Or if it's not empty, it has to be in this format, the email format. And that is the formula to how to do it. And it's also said not like not like means it should not have multiple emails, any number of characters that has comma or semicolon. Or pretty much you cannot use comma or semicolon. Like sometimes people add more than one email with comma and then that's gonna be invalid right or semicolon like that it's not going to allow you to do so so we only allow to have one email that's the rule so that's how we create the validation rule <coughs> now next how do we create the lookup wizard? So what's the lookup wizard? It's just like a drop down box. For example, I want to create a new field, <coughs> say gender. Right, so instead of typing male or female, I can actually use drop down box to help. 
So that's a lookup wizard. By switching to design view, click on gender field. And you can change the data type to lookup wizard. Now, <coughs> it's going to prompt you to either select. So it's going to prompt you to either select the list of lookup values or field from another table, or you can manually type it in by yourself. Like in this case, we're going to need to type it in because male and female. We don't really need have to have a lot of information to create a new table. Now, let's switch back. You see that we just create a lookup wizard like that. Okay, so that's how you create a lookup wizard. Now I just showing you that create form, manually type it in. Let's see how about if I want to look up from another table, I can do that too. <coughs> In this case, for example, if I have building address, like for example, I can use the list of states, right? And I can actually use the list of zip code too, which if you really think about the address table here, if you know the zip code, you already know the city and state. You you can actually omit this too on this table, right? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to import <coughs> data from Excel spreadsheet. You can always import when you create a table from text file, another database type, or an Excel spreadsheet. And I have an Excel spreadsheet that has the list of US states and cities and zip codes. So I'm going to open that up and import it to use on this table, zip code. <coughs> And again, this document actually, I have the resource for it, which is under resource here. This is a public share drive that you can download from there to test. Okay. Now I'm going to record, I mean, uh, import. You see, after import, Excel is going to show an example data here like the view of it. So we can check first below contains the column heading. That's not going to add as your data or record. And you can always change the type from here on each field if you feel like you want to make it as text, not the numbers. You can select each of this and change the type. And you can also let access add the primary key for you. Or you can just pick your own primary key here. <coughs> and you can name your own table. I'm going to name it as zip. Now, it's complete here. We just import. Excel into a database table here. <coughs> then I'm ready to add this to my building address. So, for example, I can actually select one of this field to use. Like I said, city and state is not necessary.